Hi guys, my name is Sean. I'm a houseplant enthusiast from Jakarta, Indonesia. Welcome to this episode. I'm back in Singapore and in the garden of a colocasia obsessed plant lover, An Lee. I've seen tons of showy colocasias in Thailand plant shows, but no one has been able to share information on this elusive genus until now. Hi, uh, I'm An Lee. I, I'm a colocasia uh, collector and I grow about five dozen um, colocasia hybrids here in the front porch of my uh, Singapore home. And uh, this is my garden. I've been growing colocasias for a year and a half. And everything that you see here has been grown from a small little bulb that I imported from overseas, either from uh, Thailand, Indonesia or Vietnam. And uh, they've all been grown into all of these mature plants behind me. Colocasia is actually a really underrated group of aeroids. They're just the most rewarding plants to grow. They get, you get new leaves every week. And once they mature, they stay in that mature state for as long as you want. As long as they uh, receive the right amount of nutrition and sunlight and watering, they stay really beautiful. Unlike other aeroids where variegation is prized and uh, selected for, Variegation in colocasias is commonplace. It's extremely stable and um, you often get uh, leaf after leaf uh, with unique variegation but consistently variegated. You never get a perfectly green leaf. Where do they come from and how do they have so much diversity? Right, so um, actually all these hybrids um, were bred over many successive generations, um, mostly from Thailand and you've got a few hybrids from um, the US. In fact, most of the hybrids that you see around me are uh, bred from black coral and a white lava, both hybrids from the US. Um, do you know how many species there are in the wild, naturally, roughly? Um, actually, for colocasias, there's only one species. It's a colocasia esculenta. Okay. And everything else, everything else is a hybrid. Really? Yes. But no, there's only one Esculenta. In fact, all of these um, colocations that you see around me, yeah. um, if you want to call them by their proper name, it'll be a Colocasia Esculenta hybrid. Yeah. Okay. Because all of them are derived from the same uh, same base genetics, which is the Colocasia Esculenta. So the Esculenta is the one that we eat? Yes, it's the one that you find in the, the supermarket. Taro? Yes, taro. Are it's these... not an alo, it's a colo. <laughs> are these edible? They are actually edible. In fact, I've got um, some neighbours who uh, grow Colocasia mojito, which is a very variegated form of uh, Colocasia esculenta. And um, once they've grown it to maturity, they dig up all the bulbs and they cook it. And they've told me that it tastes just like normal yam. That's funny. I did not know that. Okay. <laughs> of course, we want to advise people not to eat up their colocasias. Yeah, but it, it's going to be quite expensive to uh, eat these colocasias, but you can if you want to direct sun, preferably four to six hours. Um, you need a large home for the plant, a large pot, preferably something that's in a range of 50 centimeters and upwards. And uh, you need to provide lots of water to it. You need to keep the medium moist and you need to fertilize the plant at least once a week. The medium actually doesn't have to be very, uh, they're not fussy, you can use anything. I've got some uh, colos growing in uh, soil-based mix and I've got some growing in 100% burnt rice husk and they're all doing really well. One of the concerns that most people have when, when it comes to growing colocasias is that they're spider mite magnets. Um, and that kind of deters most people from collecting colos at all. Yeah. Um, they are spider mite magnets, but so are alos. And uh, I found that the easiest way to manage them is uh, to just wash them down every day. Um, Pesticide-wise, I use a little bit of uh, Stuxoji, a little pinch per pot. Even the pot is really big, I put just a pinch. Mm. And uh, I do that once a week and I found it uh, sufficient to control the pests. Yeah. In fact, if I've got any leaves that are overwhelmed with pests, I just cut them off. Because they'll grow and back. As long as the, the root system is healthy, it will, it will grow back. Yeah. yeah. Um, I propagate all my colocations through their offsets. And um, depending on the hybrid of the colocation, some uh, offsets are formed as uh, tight clumps, loose clumps. Uh, some are formed as runners uh, with uh, short, medium, long or even ultra-long runners. And 
What's important is you just need to separate the offset from the mum without damaging the roots and you have a brand new plant in, uh, in about two weeks. Yeah. Actually, what, what, what I do is I can actually show you some of how, how I've propagated some of the uh, colocations in my collection. Yeah. yeah. I can show you actually th these. So like, um, I can show you this. This one is the best. So this long little thing yeah. running all the way to the back is growing from this giant uh, collocation Siren Sun Moon. Yeah. And this long runner was actually air layered. I call it air layering, where I put the node of the plant yeah. in the pot and I cover it with a bit of sphagnum moss. Yeah. And, and once I do that, it is actually fully well rooted. Is it another runner or what is that that I see on so the. These are, these are actually runners that are coming off the pot. Oh, from the baby's yeah. baby. And, and what happens is if you have this growing in, a, in the ground, yeah. this is going to spread like crazy and you're going to have. Oh. Dozens and dozens of the collocations spreading around in the garden. Okay. It's a, it's a good way to propagate. So what, what, what I find really useful is um, after I've done this, all I do is uh, I cut the collocation off over here mm -hmm. and I transfer this, which would have its own root ball, yeah. um, into a proper pot yeah. uh, and put in, fill in a bit more mix mm -hmm. and then it's ready to go to a new home. Yeah. Usually, what, what I'll do is I'll cut off all these uh, small runners as well, mm. so that all the plant, that the plant will just focus its energy on um, rooting itself out in a new in a new pot. Yeah, on the one plant, mm. on the one main plant. Yeah, so, so all yeah. of these actually will grow into more sirens and moons. Yeah, yeah. Of all the colocations, I think one of the most underrated um, black glossy. Uh, hybrids with red lava is a uh, Colocation Redemption over here. Yeah. Colocation Redemption um, is my absolute favorite. I remember that when I started um, this Colocation collecting journey, um, I've, I saw so many black glossy red lava hybrids around, but there was only one hybrid that stood out from the rest. And it was this uh, hybrid from uh, Brian's Botanicals that caught my eye. Phenomenal hybrid with uh, dark black glossy leaves and a stunning uh, neon pink lava that runs along the uh, main veins of the plant. Um, it has a really tight clumping habit and it makes it so suitable for container planting. It doesn't have runners, it doesn't spread out of the pot, it just stays neat. Okay. And um, if you grow it really well, you can take it from just a, uh, a single bulb into a mature plant with multiple offsets in uh, just about five to six months. Champions of uh, a colocation competition in Thailand. Oh, wow. It's uh, Emerald Galaxy. Yeah. So I think what's prized about it is the extremely speckled variegation. Yeah, and this green, it's very intense. It's like it's a beautiful frog, yeah, the tree like frog. A, almost like green lantern green. Yeah. yeah. So this is a colocation goddess. And it's got the secondary... Yeah, secondary veining. veining. Uh, Colocasia Phantom. It's a hybrid from the US. Yeah, so it's uh, really velvety. It's uh, corrugated and highly rippled. Um, and at maturity, you can actually stand at about six feet tall with about two feet leaves, two mm. feet size uh, leaves. It's very difficult to photograph. Okay. Yeah, because the the colors and the, the, the way the light reflects off the plant, yeah. it's just so uh, ethereal, it's uh, unusual.
All right, folks, I guess it's a wrap. Anli, thank you so much for sharing your time and knowledge shared. I hope the audiences have gained some understanding, maybe even newfound respect for Calacasias. As usual, please send likes and comments down below if this video has brought you some joy. See you in the next one. Bye. Thank you, Patreon members, for supporting the channel. Should you consider joining as a member, the Patreon link is Sean from Only Plants. It can also be found in this video description. I've started producing bonus content for members. These include plant hauls, plant shopping, and mini bite-sized adventures. The same bonus contents will also be unlocked for you if you join to become a YouTube member of the channel. There is a monthly membership fee as small as a cup of coffee a month. Simply go to Only Plants channel page and click join. Your contributions help me grow the channel, do better content, and have a better quality of life. For that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart.